There are some great tutorial videos available for Partworks on the CD and lots of information in the help menu which I highly recommend checking on when you get a chance. Here's the Reader's Digest version to get you up and running though and creating ShopBot toolpath files from drawings that your engineers or CAD drives guys have drawn. Start by opening Partworks by clicking on its icon on your desktop. There will probably be two icons on there, one for Partworks and one for Partworks 3D. So make sure you select the icon without the 3D. The program will open with a blank work area ready for you to get started. Select the Create a New File link and a fill-in sheet will appear with settings that are material specific, like the size of your sheet, where you're going to zero your z-axis, and several others that you can ignore for now. Change these so that they are correct for the material you're cutting, including the true accurate material thickness, then click OK. A white area will appear that represents the sheet you'll be cutting. A blank sheet doesn't help you much though, so it's time to import the drawing of the parts that you'll be cutting. There are several formats that will import, but I recommend either an AutoCAD DXF or DWG file. If the people drawing your parts use the latest and greatest version of AutoCAD, currently AutoCAD 2010, ask them to save it in an earlier version like AutoCAD 2004, 2000, or even Release 14 just to make sure there won't be any compatibility issues. Click the Import Vector Drawing icon, select the drawing file that you want in Toolpath, and the pieces should magically appear on the sheet. Only click it once, even if you don't see the parts, because depending on where they were drawn, they may be off the sheet, and you don't want to keep importing copies that are just piled on top of each other, creating duplicate vectors. If you don't see the pieces, try zooming out, you might find them. You can also try selecting everything by control by holding down the control key with your, on your keyboard and then hitting the A key and then clicking the center button. If they were imported correctly, they should now appear in the center of the sheet. Now that you have all your pieces on the table, there are a couple of things you have to do to make the parts cuttable. The most important thing is to make sure that you have all the that all the individual pieces of your parts, the lines and arcs, accurately meet at their corners so that they can be joined and not just be a bunch of individual parts that they don't stay as open vectors. Do the control A key trick again to select everything then click the join button. It might list some closed vectors and some open vectors at the top but will hopefully only list closed vectors at the bottom. Click the join button and you're ready to try creating your toolpath. If however it still says that you have open vectors you can find them by picking select all open vectors from the edit menu and you will see them highlighted. That means there's a gap between the segments somewhere, so tell the person that did the drawing that the parts won't join and get them to check it out. It's usually a simple fix. You also want to make sure that you don't have any duplicate vectors, a part or line that's directly on top of another part. Go to the Select Duplicate Vectors item in the Edit menu and you should see any duplicates highlighted. Delete them and you should be okay. If you need to make any changes to the pieces or their placement, now's the time to do it like moving the parts around and rotating them to make them fit better on the sheet. There's a lot of information on doing this in the help menu, so check it out. You can also change the start point of any part by selecting the node edit arrow. The current start point will be green, but if you hover your mouse over the black square node where you want your new start point to be, the mouse pointer will turn into a little box with crosshairs. Right click, select make start point, and the start point will move to there. Once you have the parts on the sheet and where you want them, do the Control A keyboard trick one more time to select everything, and then click the Toolpath tab on the right side of the screen. A menu will pop out with a list of options, but the one you want for cutting out shapes is the Profile Toolpath option. Select that button and the fill-in sheet will appear with options for creating profile cuts. The first set of values controls how deep the file will cut. The top number refers to the top of the cut, so keep that at zero but you want the cut to go all the way through the material and a tiny bit into the table so set that the bottom number to be a little more than the material thickness. Now you need to select the bit you'll be cutting with and to make sure that all the settings are correct for that bit including how deep it will cut in a pass and how fast it will be cutting. These are material and bit specific but once you have them set the way you want them you can, apply, you can click apply and they'll be that way forever. Since you'll be cutting the parts out rather than making recesses for them to fit into Select the outside option next and then move down to the ramp tab. It may be hidden a little, so click the arrow to move it over. It's the fourth tab on the row with the tabs tab. This setting makes the bit plunge in a long ramp rather than just plunging straight down and is critical for bits that don't have cutting edges along their bottom. It also makes the bits last longer and helps hold the parts 
so I suggest you use ramping whenever you can. The smooth option works well. Pick a reasonable length. Four to six inches is a good starting point, but you can refine it as you get more experience. Type in a name that you'll remember toward the, at the box at the bottom, and if all goes well, you'll see a message telling you that your toolpath will cut through the material. You know that already, though. You did that on purpose when you entered the cutting depth, so just click OK. Once you've successfully created your toolpath, you're almost done, but it's handy to preview it just to make sure. First, let's look at the 2D preview by clicking the leftmost tab on the screen, which unless you've already named your partworks file, will be called New. A 2D preview of your drawing in the toolpath will show things like whether the cuts are inside or outside, or whether they overlap. You can also do a 3D preview of the parts by clicking the 3D tab and selecting the Preview Toolpath option. When you're satisfied that everything is the way you want, click the Close button and select the Save icon. Make sure the checkbox is checked in the toolpath that you just created at the top of the fill-in, and in the drop-down box in the bottom, select the Toolpath Arcs Inch with Speed SBP Pro Processor. Click the Save Toolpath button, type in a name and location that you'll easily remember in the Windows dialog box that appears, and once it's saved, you're done.